Well, folks, I'm sitting in the truck again. It seems to be an ongoing theme for a lot of my fishing reports. Well, this time we're getting some real rain, and I don't want to drown a camera. Uh, so, to get started, um, right off the bat, some quick announcements. Um, we are continuing with some blog setups on the website, and Albert's working very hard on that. And, of course, once again, Albert, thanks for your efforts. Uh, we do have a bunch of dates open for pike fishing, and the pike fishing is starting to heat up. So if you're interested in chasing some toothy critters, get in contact with us. We'll get you into the system. So we're, we'll be starting the pike gig here in a couple of weeks. I know Ricky's starting up here pretty quick, so we've got a lot of time, um, dates available to go out, and you can experience some of our pike fishing. Plus... Um, we do got some dates still available for this fall, so if you're starting to put your fall calendar together, it might be good to get a hold of us. That's starting to get a little bit crowded. So I uh, that, think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I do have a podcast out with the, with the Wet Fly, Swing a Wet Fly podcast, so you may want to check that out. Other than that, let's get on to fishing. We're still chasing the dropbacks on the Salmon River. I will myself probably be doing that for another two weeks. I'm the last guy off the river. Rick will be heading to the Pike Water here um, this week. He will be fishing a little bit dropbacks during the week, but um, we're starting to shift to the toothy critters. But yeah, we got probably about two more weeks of um, of uh, swing um, steelhead fishing, and this is this time of year is what I refer to as swing season. It's actually some of my favorite times of the year to be chasing these steelhead you know we're, it's all spay casting sink tip work covering the water fishing the cool flies so yeah we're right in the full bits of that um last week they were a little bit grumpy um we were finding fish basically every place we stopped on our runs because we're covering lots of water we're finding fish either we're hooking the fish we're seeing fish jumping around we're seeing fish in the pools so we're still finding plenty of fish they were just a little bit crabby this week we had a lot of drops um we would hook them and they'd shake off. It'll, yeah, welcome steelhead fishing. So we had a bunch of that going on. So, but the water temperatures are still in the upper 40s, low 50s, depending on where you are. So the water temperatures are really good. Water flows right now are at 500 CFS. I suspect we might see some 750 water this week. Once again, I'm sitting in the truck at an access point, babbling about the, the fishing because I don't want to draw my poor camera. So... That'll tell you what, and we do have some wet weather through most of the week, so we'll have to see what it does with the water flows. If the river goes up, everybody says it'll wash the fish out. That has not been my observations over the years. Usually what we do find is that the fish get dispersed, and not just dispersed vertically through the river, horizontally across the river. So keep in mind, all that frog water, all that non-productive non water that we usually ignore when we're normally steelhead fishing, can be productive. Those steelhead can literally be anywhere. That entire river, even that junky, skinny frog water now becomes productive for them. Because in that skinny, junky, so-called junky water, it's got baby chinooks and crayfish in it, and they can be in there hunting those things. So even though every once in a while it's a good idea to throw a fly in there and streamer fish it out. And also when, when we come through there, we're doing the classic steelhead swing. We're fishing it right to the hang down. And we're holding it at the hang down because we're getting a lot of eats now at the, during the hang down. And we'll also, because often we're that tip could be a little heavy and into the shallow there. We'll kind of be trying to move the fly a little bit fast to keep from the tick hanging up, the tip hanging up. And then we'll start stripping it almost some little gentle streamer twi um, twitches. I always say think chili crayfish just t t t and we'll retrieve that for about five or ten feet. And that can you'd be surprised how many fish are grabbed during that part of the the retrieve before we just rip the flying jacket out again. So it's a coverage game. I mean, some days we're using drift boats, some days we're walking the river. You know, once again, there's fish from the um, from Elkmar all the way down to the bottom of the DSR right at the moment. The hatchery still has a fair amount of fish. I'm suspecting here that this week they're going to probably give the fish a boot in the hatchery and kick them out. Uh, but there's still a bunch of fish in there. So that's kind of what's going on with the steelhead now the dsr um is seeing a bunch of smallmouth bass in there uh in the bottom end especially in the bottom end the dsr is really bassy so the, you're bumping in some really nice bass in there it's three to five pounders and of course steelhead so even if you're looking for steelhead just cover as much water in the dsr as you can and then 
so you fish from the top, fish the bottom on the way back up, hit those spots again. So just because you're in that that run or that pool an hour or two ago and didn't touch anything doesn't mean that it didn't collect a few fish in that time span because those fish are always when they seem to get that bottom end like around the ducks and salmon those fish seem to move a little bit faster on the way out so it's good for you to fish fast too and just recover water and the uh as for the bass fishing uh yes the bass season is closed however it is legal at this time to target bass on a catch and release basis at least in the salmon river be mindful where you fish. Some areas it is illegal to target bass right now with the season closed. And if you're worried about upsetting them and they're spawning because there's a lot of big fat females showing up right now, just stay in the pools and runs right in the center and fish those things and avoid the edges because that's where the spawning activity is happening. So if you stay kind of in the center of the pool, you'll stay away from the bulk of the spawning, the actively spawning fish and away from the reds. And actually what you're going to do is probably catch a lot of the females probably at that point in either post or pre-spawn where the males, they guard the nest and they're on the edges and you should be away from them. And at least not bothering them too much. So that's something to keep in mind if you're a little concerned about affecting the spawning and what's going on there. But the DSR is, um, things are fishing pretty decent for this time of year down to DSR. You know, it's... Yeah, this is probably this week, maybe next week, could probably your best two weeks, uh, probably the main two weeks for any amount of steelhead down there. Um, probably third week, who knows? It all depends on how these temperatures are. It looks like it's going to be cool again, so it looks like we're not going to get a lot of warm temperatures. Keep in mind, when water temperatures start getting to the low 60s, that's what really pushes these fish out fast. But as long as we stay in the um, mid-50s, they'll hang and eat. So that's something to keep in mind. So they'll... So that's going to be fishing pretty good. And there's not a lot of fishing pressure down the DSR. Also, there's not a lot of fishing pressure on the Salmon River. So I suspect we're probably going to see some 750 um, water. And yeah, I'm sitting in the truck. Excuse me, folks. I'm looking for, oh, well, I got flies all over the place. And you can never find them when you want them. You know how it is. You know, if you want a, fish, a lot of intruders, stuff like that, here's one of the flies we're using. It's a little bit chewed up. But you can see the size length. And here's another one we're using. Um, that and steelhead crack, which everybody probably figures I'm getting most of my fish on. So, yeah, you know, size fours, even kind of a black and olive woolly bugger, which um, looks a little bit, um, baby chinooky, sixes and fours and that, that's been working. So that's basically, um, keep your flies about like this, keep them meaty, and keep them about three quarters d at depth. You, you still want a couple of feet up in the bottom so that fly is really silhouetted. And they can see it because they want it they'll go get it and at this point it's more important that that fly's got a nice lifelike swing and swim to it and it's visible you know not too high up in water column but you want to definitely be um during the winter not 40 degrees we like to be within six inches of the bottom now i want to be two feet above um within the bottom you know a foot and a half two feet off the bottom because one of those fish are a little bit more suspended and they're actively looking for food so that's your little bit of a fishing tip in there so that's pretty much what's going on um, with the tributaries. Obviously, I mentioned earlier, Ricky's starting on the pike thing. Um, we've already got, like, one of the guys got a 44-inch pike, just a beautiful monster thing. And the pike are coming off their um, spawning cycle, so they're really starting to wake back up, and they're starting to eat. So the pike fishing is picking up. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we got time for our toothy critter program, our pike fishing, if you want to join us. That's starting to heat up. Um, we're going to be doing that well within well within june probably almost to july so that's that fishery is going to be going on for a while we're going to be focusing on that quite a bit um as for the trout fishing um obviously we're getting some it's going to be probably a wet week so check your water um yeah check your water temperatures if you're in the upper 50s you're going to be good mid 50s you should have some bug activity i know my local trout streams are getting some hendricks and some olives um some of your other but my local um, trout stream gets a very early Anderson hatch. Most of the other um, waters you're probably going to see the front end of that, probably see some olives, uh, probably some blue quills. But check your um, water flows because if it's up a little bit, it might be back to a, a nymphing indicator game and maybe some small buggers and streamer game. Um, waiting for the waiting for the hatches to get rolling. They'll be the hatches ought to be starting up here fairly soon. You know, on a we are the end of April, so we still got a couple of weeks for a lot of your places to start seeing a good Hendricksons and olives. So the trout fishing is starting to heat up. 
um, for you trout guys, like I said, it's you know just prepare to do a little nymphing and streamer fishing when you go there, and you just kind of got to play it out, play it by ear. But if you're looking for your best activity, try afternoon, late morning to mid afternoons, late afternoons when the, your water temperatures are going to be the, at the best, and that's when you're going to probably see some bug activity and some feeding activity. So that's what's going on with the trout fishing. There's a lot starting to happen, even though the steelhead fishing is starting to, well, we're starting to wind down our steelhead fishing, and but yet the pike fishing and the trout fishing is all heating up, so a lot's happening. I uh, hope to see you on the water, and as always, it's good meeting everybody that I bump into that says they've heard me on the podcast or, or watches the videos. Thank you for the support. I like you guys saying hello and enjoy meeting you on the, on the, on the river. So until then, see you in the river, folks. We got a lot of fishing ahead of us. See ya. This is Jay at JPEC Guides in Lost River Fishing. We are a year round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then, during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you're interested in any of our islands, or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.